welcome, hello to this delayed edition of the laser live stream. I was gonna say something else, but that's okay. I'm all like, hello, hello, is this thing on? Hello, can you hear me? What's going on? Is anyone out there? Is the internet broken? I'm not too sure. Welcome, my name's Gil, and this is the laser live stream where we get together every two weeks to talk all about lasers, projects, light burn, you name it, we discuss it or we touch upon it. And we've been doing this now. I was actually thinking about it. It's well been over a year. We had an anniversary. We didn't even celebrate it. It's kind of weird. Uh, first off, I guess I want to talk about the elephant in the room. Last week, we were planning to do this live stream. Unfortunately, there was a, a break in internet communication. Someone broke the internet. It wasn't me. Now, I am a maker at heart. I was so frustrated when I was sitting here and I couldn't get this live stream to work. I was ready to disassemble my laser and see if I could make a laser communicator and bounce the signal off, satellites and all the rest of it. But you know what? They say good things come to those who wait. So I, you know what? There is a certain amount of time during my week that I put into preparing these uh, live streams. And I just, I was just super excited to be able to share it with you, but we're gonna do it now. So it's kind of cool. Let's go straight to the chat room. Let's see who's around. You see, people have forgotten. Normally, there's like 10 people in by now, but that's okay. I I hung around. If you were here last week, I did hang around in the chat room and, and tried to talk to as many people as I could, which is great. Um, Stuart's here. Hey, Stuart. Good to see you. He said, he says, looks like this thing is on. I'm telling you, I, I was pumping on the, on the bike, recharging those batteries and hoping the internet wouldn't go down. So uh, I'm glad you're here. Audrey's here as well from Melbourne. Glad to have you back. Thank you so much, Audrey. Um, Audrey and Stuart are saying hello. And Stuart's saying it's great to see me and Audrey letting me know that everyone can hear me. So that's great. That's cool. I am really, really glad to be back. You know, it's a weird thing. I know that we do this twice a month, but I actually have to be honest with you and let you guys know that I'm, I kind of miss doing this sort of stuff with you. Um, it's, it's a, I don't know. It's, it's kind of a weird situation. I love being able to explore stuff with the laser, go put out some videos during the week and then come back and actually have this conversation. And as much as I love doing those tutorial videos or delving into some sort of maker technology, it is really a highlight to be able to do this in real time. So let's jump straight into, into it. First of all, I do want to acknowledge the people who have allowed us to be able to get together and uh, and do this. And that happens to be both Darkly Labs, Home of the Emblazer range. If you're looking for a laser that you want to sit in an office or maybe in a classroom and and empower uh, students, the Emblazer 2 is designed to be in a classroom. It, uh, it, you know, I can't think highly enough. A lot of the work that I do is with the Emblazer. Go check them out. They can be found at www.darklylabs.com. And of course, Lightburn Software also jumping on board and making sure that we can uh, make this a consistent stream. Thank you know, the Lightburn Software runs the Emblazer as well as a number of different laser machines. We had Jason from Lightburn on here where he had a big conversation about the history of Lightburn. I I remember the first time I met Light, uh, met Lightburn, I met Jason, but the first time I actually got to play with Lightburn, I had been using something called Kanban beforehand and Lightburn completely changed the way I make. So I wanna thank both Darkly Labs and Lightburn for getting on board and actually really just helping us out. And you know what, as I was doing that, I saw Dory came in, newbie to laser engraving, been doing it since August. Dory, I'm so glad you've been able to join us. Welcome, you know, this whole thing is not just about Putting videos up on YouTube, we're building a laser community, and there are communities out there. In fact, we're going to speak to some people from an existing community a little bit later. Dominic comes in and and dominates in the chat room. How are you doing, Dominic? Dominic happens to be the heart and soul behind Darkly Labs, so it's great to see him on, on there. We all know him. He's come onto this stream many, many times. Kubi Coleman, coming from sunny London. How are you doing, Kubi? I don't know if you were here last week. I was, you know, I, <coughs> I know with the time differences, sometimes people get up really early in the morning. I thought, did, did I wake up Kubi? And then we couldn't do the stream. So I'm glad you're still here. Thank you so much, my friend. It's great to see you. Um, but as I was saying, Dominic, he's come on the stream. We've done some laser challenges. And uh, you know what? Again, I, I 
don't think we'd be talking if it wasn't for my involvement and being introduced to, to laser technology. And my first step was the, the, the guys at Darkly Labs. And, you know, I don't know if I've ever told this story on the stream. So maybe I'll do it now. And that is the very first time that I saw an Emblazer 2. I happened to see it at a university here called Swinburne University. A little bit of history uh, or a little bit of background for me. I was actually pursuing a PhD in making. So I was looking at maker culture and the way kind of this new community had come together to support people all around the world. And there seemed to be this big, huge movement of people kind of moving away from traditional jobs and becoming makers. And I saw a big push on that on YouTube. I had met a lot of people uh, who were makers on YouTube. I was really fortunate to travel uh, both to uh, America and Brazil and meet a whole bunch of makers, including people like Jimmy Darista. And it was, uh, you know, I had come back and I was really inspired to kind of dive deeply, deep, deep dive into what was making the maker community, twi uh, you know, twitch and, and, and evolve. And it was like everyone was talking about it. So I happened to go down to Swinburne University and they have a lab where they they create they get students to create their ideas. It's basically a design lab. And in one of the rooms they had this diode laser called the Emblazer. And I was like, what's that? And they were like, oh, one of our graduates from Swinburne designed this this laser cutter. And I was like, cool, man. I do you know sometimes I'm gonna use an analogy, but I'm sure everyone knows it. You meet someone, you go, I'm going to be great friends with those people. And I was like, I had this feeling. I was like, Dean Blazer and I, we're going to be like that. I got this. Uh, so I actually hunted down the name of Darkly Labs uh, and find out, found out they were in Melbourne and sent them an email. And this was probably November. November of many years ago, just to give you a timeline. So, so I sent this email and I hear nothing. Nothing. And about... I think it was September the next year. Uh, I actually was lucky enough to give a keynote uh, presentation at a place called EduTech, which is a kind of edu education technology. And at the time I was working within that industry and I happened to go around the expo and uh, there was a emblazer. And, there were, and I went up and I happened to know the person who was the, uh, the distributor through uh, different different work that I had done. And he said, let me go introduce you to the guys from Darkly Labs, they're here. And I got introduced to Dominic. And I remember walking up to him going, hey, I know you guys, you're the guys who don't reply to emails. And Dominic was, no, no, we do that all the time. We had this amazing chat and I said to him, can I borrow one? Can I borrow one for a weekend? I'd love to do a video for my YouTube channel and I'd love to learn all about the technology. And uh, that, that laser still sits here. I'm gonna tap it right here. Can you hear that? That's still, I never gave it back. Actually, the truth of the matter is, uh, I, I, after I did the video, um, I was able to go back into Darkly Labs and I was so excited about the potential of getting um, that product out further that I wanted to do a few more videos. And after doing a whole bunch of them, they said, just keep it, keep it, you're enjoying it. You know, well, let, let's do some more work. So really it's the fact that, you know, it's kismet, right, man? It's, it's got to be like in, in the heavens in a lot of ways that, uh, you know, that email didn't, obviously it wasn't the right time, but we were able to catch up and uh, it was just great to go in there and see what they're doing. One of the things that I love being Australian myself and a maker, all the equipment that I, that I, the normal equipment that you see behind me, either comes from China, it comes from Europe, it comes from America. And I love the fact that the Emblazer is Australian. I really do. And I, you know, I love this laser. It's what it's been able to do. And the friends that I've met along the way have been absolutely awesome. So, you know what? There's a little bit of history behind how I got involved with the Emblazer. You know what? <laughs> Next time you meet Dominic, go up to him and be like, you didn't send me an email. Can I have Emblazer? Maybe we can do that with the next one that's coming out. I don't know. We'll see what's happening. But uh, I wonder if Dominic's going, I, I remember that. I remember there's some crazy guy with a lot of enthusiasm for, for equipment. And over the years, as I said, I've been able to get to know them and, and work with them. So that's fantastic. That's kind of cool. Um, let's jump into it. We've said hello to everyone in the chat room. Let's just go through what the intentions are. If you've met me before, you know what this is about, but this is not just about doing live streams and creating content. 
it is actually about building a community. Oh, look, hang on. Before we do that, people are coming. I love this. There's a delay. I get that there's a delay here on, on YouTube. From about 30 seconds after I tell the story, then I've got to buy some time. That's why sometimes I, I talk about something else and then they come through. So let's go to the chat room. And it's like Malcolm saying, great story, great company, Darkening Labs, a very fast postage. They were awesome. Let me tell you, when I go down there and this is like, I'm not saying this, People have said to me, oh, you know what? We had, you know, this didn't work or whatever. And I'm like, when, when I've, every time I've been in the offices and someone comes in or there's a phone call and there's tech support, I'm telling you, these guys care. And that's one of the things that I really love about the company. It's really what, that's one of the reasons why I stand behind them. Uh, Malcolm saying, first met Dom and saw the Emblazer at a data uh, Queensland conference a few years ago. Thought that we that I was going to get one of them at some stage. There you go, Mal. I hope you've got one now. I, I'm pretty sure you've got uh, your your core. So I'm really glad. In fact, we've even spoken about the fact that you you guys met at uh, I believe the data stands for like a teaching uh, group as well, right? Let us know. So it's it's awesome. It's just awesome to see what what goes on. And you know what? I'm super excited to see what. I'm just like everyone else. I can't wait to see the next thing because this is a great machine. But I want you know what. It's a little bit like the iPhone. I want the latest and greatest. I'm, oh, I'm itching. I'm itching to get some stuff done. Anyway, that's okay. So let's go through the intentions. As I was saying before, we're not just doing this to create a uh, just content on YouTube. I want to create a community. Now, there are many communities out there. That's cool. I What I love about what, what we're fostering here is we're all going on this journey together. Everyone is learning and focusing on what they're interested in and sharing. I think that's really cool. And I just, I love to be able to be in a place where, you know, it's a positive forward moving group. And that's exactly what, uh, what, uh, what uh, I, I, that's what I'm hoping to, to create. And I can't do it without you. So let's look at the first intention for, of the laser live stream community. And that is to build a creative, interactive laser community. I think I just said that all before. So let's move on to the next one. And that is to support all laser users, whether you use a diode laser, a CO2 laser, a fiber laser, maybe a laser pointer, maybe a lightsaber, I don't know. But wherever you fall on that spectrum, we want to support all laser users, especially in the areas of safety. We want to be able to educate people so they understand that this piece of technology is not only awesome, but how it works and some of the pitfalls to avoid because that is one of the things that that always bothered me a little bit when it came to this technology becoming available for the market for the market there are some people who think it's videotape technology you put the tape in you hit the button and it works first time every time but the truth of the matter is you i believe to to work with safely with a machine of uh with the potential to cut through material, it's really nice to be, to understand the mechanics behind it, the theory behind it, and understand where there could be potential problems. So that's one of the things that we do here on the laser live stream. Our third one is to share knowledge, whether it's safety knowledge, whether it's knowledge when it comes to creating a project, whether it is you know the knowledge you know sharing knowledge of being able to share what is possible on the machines. We love to be able to share that because no one. No one is, is the ultimate expert. And of course, our fourth intention is that we learn from everybody. Everyone has um, knowledge and experience that they can share that, we might, that I might not even have experience with. And in fact, you're going to see later on in this live stream, we're going to go and have a quick interview with such a person when, uh, who's going, who has a lot more in experience than myself when it comes to what we're going to be talking about today. So it is awesome to be able to invite people on and be able to share everything in this, uh, in this medium, in this forum. So that is awesome. Now, to be part of a community, you need to get involved. Now, this is the great thing about live streaming. If you might be uh, new to this channel, you might see that I put out a video almost every week about either light burn or lasers or laser project. And I love getting that feedback. Don't get me wrong. Those thumbs ups and those, those comments, they mean a lot to me. And they also help get a little bit more attention on this channel so people can find the live stream, can find what's, what's going on. But when it comes to live streaming, this is 30 second delay. Guys, if you've got questions, if you want to be, if you want to be involved, let me go through how you can. 
And that is, well, first of all, if this is your first time here and I, and I believe there may be some new, new members of the community, hit that subscribe button. That will support this project. This will support this topic that, especially when, uh, when we're working on it, unfortunately, YouTube works on algorithms. There's AIs in the background. The more interaction, the more messages, uh, the more comments, the more thumbs up that helps other people when they're searching on this subject to go, Hey, look at that Gil guy. Look, Hey, he's got a live stream. Cool. Let's go check him out. So that's definitely the, one of the first things you can do. The other thing you can do is feel free to chat. I love it. questions during these live streams. You'll see me going back to the chat room constantly. Do not be afraid to converse. This is not a one way street It is a two way street. And that's why I love the, uh, the live streams. It probably, probably as much as I enjoy putting the videos out, but once the video is done, that's done, right? I go, I'll answer all the questions that I can and I'll point people to the videos, but this is truly community building. Now, if you're watching this on the replay and there's something you want to add or something you want to show us, you can email us at laser.livestream at gmail.com. That is the direct line to the laser live stream and everyone's welcome to share maybe their project or maybe they've got some tips or tricks. It is awesome to be able to get a, a hold of uh, other people's experiences. And in fact, we have dedicated uh, people who watch these live stream and then get in contact through email. And if you want something a little bit more real time, we have a group on Facebook and you can get in touch with the laser live stream group at www.facebook.com slash group slash laser live stream and you will see names and projects of the people in the live stream right over there and let me you know how i said we you know we're building a community right around the world let me go straight to the chat room which is right there right there and say hello to near who's all the way from israel i think near probably gets the longest you know the furthest i'm in australia he's literally on the other side of the world for me the Middle East, near. Good morning. It's evening here, but uh, thank you so much for coming on on board. I know that you were here last week, and unfortunately, we didn't make it. But I did get to say hello to you. So, thank you so much for coming on board, and it's good to have you as part of the uh, community. I've been watching some of the posts that you've been putting up in the Facebook group, and I think Near is going to be interested in the subject of what we're talking about today. Now, there's two other ways that you can support this live stream and this project. Uh, one of them is if you happen to learn something or we go across something that really changes the way you use your lasers, um, there's two ways that you can actually put a financial um, a f a donation, which is exactly what it is, towards the channel. So one way is if you happen to be here live, you can do a thing called a super chat in the chat room and uh, they're kind of like stickers. You can put an amount in, you can do it that way. Or alternatively, you can go down in the description below and there is a PayPal link to a one-time donation. So if you feel that you've gotten something out of worth and you want to share kind of, you know, that joy, send me a message. This, definitely do it through the, uh, the PayPal. I've had some really beautiful notes uh, as well as uh, donations that really, they just blow me away. So thank you so much for the people who've done it before. A lot of them say, Gil, I just want to do this anonymously. So I don't want to embarrass anyone, but I do want to let them know that I really appreciate uh, the support and the note. The note to me is heartfelt. And the fact that you're going into your pocket when you don't have to is pretty amazing. All right, going back to the chat room because I see a few more people coming in. We've got Kim coming from Gippsland. You're, I'm very new and enjoying the learning curve. Kim, I'm glad. First of all, thank you so much for coming on board and coming into to, to the live stream. Um, I know I've been watching your growth on the Facebook group. It is awesome to see and I'm glad you're enjoying it. There is a little bit of an uphill curve. There is just a slight uphill curve. But the cool thing is once you get down there, it's all downhill and you just keep growing on those on those skills that you learn. And, um, and Jeanette. Oh, I was going to say that wrong. And Jeanette, you, can I tell you guys a little secret as well? I'm going to tell this to Anjanette too. I'm terrible with names. I get names wrong all the time. Some of my students, I'm like, hey man, if I get your name wrong, don't take it personally. It's like, I try to remember too much and I think I've rotted my name cells in my brain. So, uh, and Jeanette, I was like, I'm gonna say this wrong, but I think I got it right. And Jeanette's coming in from uh, North Queensland. Good to see you, Anjanette. I'm so glad you were able to join us here 
on the la the laser live stream so it's great to see some new names here and you know what we're just going to keep moving forward and that is awesome so let's go over what we're going to do here on the live stream tonight and i got a feeling you know normally i got it right thank you for a second day i was sweating can you see that i'm, I'm glistening uh, thank you so much for letting me know <laughs> Jeanette, that i got it right now normally we try to do this for an hour i feel kind of bad that we missed it like last week so we might go a little over because I, I try to pack as much as i can in here but let's go through what we're going to do tonight so tonight we're going to go through the emblazer user showcase that's where we show some of the work that people have made over the last two weeks in this case three weeks then we're going to go on and we're going to look at laser etched art tile artwork if you happen to follow this channel you would have seen last week there was a walkthrough tutorial on using a thing called the norton white tile method that should have come out after this. So guess what we're going to be talking about today? And then we're going to go through the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to materials. What is good to use in a laser cutter? What's bad you, bad to use in a laser cutter? What you should never use in a laser cutter? And then, and then I'm going to take one big deep breath and go, wow, we did it. We pulled it off again. So it's kind of, it's kind of fun. Now, Malcolm's sharing with Anjanette. It's uh, always an uphill journey because I learned something every new... Every time I play, I learn something new every time I play. It is awesome. That's one of the things that I love about the lasers. I like that about 3D printing. I like, love that about Arduino and electronics. I love that about woodwork. You know what? There's a whole bunch. I know you guys are here for the lasers, so I won't talk about all the other things that I do. But I'm forever trying to learn as much as I possibly can because I think that's what life's all about. And whether you're doing this for a side hustle or you're doing it because you want to know uh how to create things maybe you want to put another thread to your bow so you can fire your message arrow further out i totally get that that's why i call myself a maker because i'm always learning from others whether i'm watching them whether i'm actually asking questions or whether i'm going out and trying things myself so i totally get that now it is an awesome way to feel so let's jump straight into it we're talking about something that people are incredibly well Actually, I was just about to, we should go into the uh, amazing user pieces of art, art creations. Sorry, I just, I jumped ahead of myself. I was about to go and talk about the tiles, but let's go and take a look at what people have been making in the last three weeks. So first off, we have Marcos and Marcos is a, again, a, a new member to the laser live stream community. And Marcos made this Noah's Park, kind of Jurassic Park emblem for his son. And this is awesome. I remember, well, I remember I asked him, what did you make it from? I thought he made it from EVA foam. That's what I would have done. Uh, but he actually used MDF and paint. And that's an incredible rendition of uh, the Jurassic Park logo. And of course here, instead of saying Jurassic Park, he's actually said Noah's Park. And again, I don't know about you guys, but I love the, the final result on this. I can't tell that it's uh, MDF. And, uh, you know, he, he created this in his laser for his son. And that's, you know, one of the things that I love about the flexibility of laser technology. If you've got an idea, you can go and create it and work it out. So Marcos, great job. And I, I've got a feeling Noah would love that sign. It's probably on his door. Probably has dinosaurs in his bedroom too. Lucky kid. All right, let's move on. And Jeanette is again, another new member to the laser live stream. And she's just learning about her laser and this is one of her first projects and here she showed the before and after this is a lot of fun too this is a happy 30th birthday to jane sign and she also has i think i don't believe this is mdf i i believe it could be just um some laser ply uh i could be wrong maybe anjanette's around and she can let us know um but you can see that she's gone in there and actually the first one was the trial the mock-up and then the second one was using both black material, uh, sorry, wood that was painted black and then wood that was actually left natural. So, so it's a two layer sign. Again, very, very effective. I love seeing this sort of stuff. It is just awesome to be able to uh, see people taking that journey that, you know, first first couple of signs are always the, I find to be a lot of fun. You, Stuart says he loves the Australia on the bottle, yeah. I got a feeling Jane had a birthday in Australia. What do you think? I hope it wasn't in Melbourne. I hope she was able to get her out and about and celebrate it. We're still stuck here in lockdown in Melbourne. Ugh. But it looks like the end is near. 
not in a bad way more like the end of the lockdown gosh it was like the end is nigh no it's not not what i'm talking about at all um but lockdown looks like we are heading out soon which which i'm looking forward to i get to go hang out with my darkly labs crew It'll be awesome all right let's move on uh, tracy uh, tracy made these really cool uh boxes these are obviously for children when they lose their teeth so they can put their teeth in there for the tooth fairy amazingly cool artwork very very cute i like the uh tooth fairy that has been engraved on these wooden boxes they're very cool and i said you know what i have to i've got to share this this is really really cool um so yeah it is really good oh see anginet's here it's oh you know oh man that's really research in ply lost is black acrylic and gold adhesive vinyl. Wow, okay, I'm gonna go back there. I'm sorry. I should know better than that. There's Anjanette, I knew she was right here. No, Anjanette, why did you just retract the question? I was just reading it out. Um, but she said there was black, black acrylic and vinyl. And I don't know why suddenly <laughs> Anjanette's pulling back her, her messages. We love it when you share what's going on there. Um, the gold vinyl, let me just ask you a quick question, Anjanet. Is what kind of vinyl vinyl were you using? Only because I want to make sure that you want that you are aware that some vinyls have are made out of PVC. And PVC sometimes releases chlorine, or most of the time releases chlorine if it's made. Um, so make sure that you're using a, a chlorine-free vinyl. Uh, in future when you're using the laser or maybe you cut the vinyl on a cutter or something like that that's not a problem sorry first one is ply that's okay not a problem but no problem with that i'm just glad you were here and we were able to share because i love that sign as i was saying so there you go i'm sure in 30 seconds and it will give me an answer as to how, what that was made out of as i said this is these boxes were made out of, out of uh Sorry, Tracy made these boxes and Anjanette's sharing with us that the, sec the second was black acrylic with vinyl. Did you cut the vinyl in? I'm going to stop there. Did you cut the vinyl in the laser or did you use a different machine like a Cricut or, a, uh, or something like that? Was it a vinyl cutter or did you actually use the vinyl in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the laser? That is just important to know. Um, and that's why I just wanted to, before we go any further, I just want to be, clarify that because as I was saying before, vinyl, traditional vinyl is made out of PVC and PVC, when you cut it, releases chlorine into the, into the atmosphere and the moisture in the atmosphere then bonds with the chlorine and turns it into a gas. Not only is that dangerous to your laser cutter because it'll attack your electronic boards and parts in the laser and eventually over time you will it will, it will destroy it but it will also it, it's got a toxic effect on people in fact they use chlorine gas in world war one so there you go cool i'm glad i just saw it. yes chlorine free vinyl vinyl added on top and uh and kiss cut then weed no problems i'm so so glad to hear that I get messages from a lot of people who go, hey, I just saw your video about vinyl. I wish I had seen it before. I ended up coming in, going into the emergency room and they had me on oxygen and all this other stuff. That's one of the reasons it's, uh, I know someone who was badly affected by it. In fact, I was badly affected by it when I started my laser journey. I didn't know any better. And that's one of the th reasons why I was asking that question. So I'm glad to see that it is chlorine free. Excellent. All right, let's move on with the gallery. And this is Morris. And Morris went and engraved a chopping board. And it says, a real man steps up to the plate, but a better man cooks his meal. I thought that was awesome. And Morris, again, is a new, a new member to the community. And I hope he gets to see us acknowledging his great work. And now, oh, yeah, there's some guy called Gil who uh, got a little stir crazy over the last two weeks and then took his favorite movie. I'll see if anyone knows uh, in the chat room, what this movie refers to, but, uh, I got a little bit creative and I created this, uh, Melbourne maximum quarantine penitentiary. It's kind of how I feel right now. We are, we've been locked down a long time, Australia Island. And I don't know if anyone can see, but the logos there also refer to another Australian film, a great Australian film. Um, let's see, I'll, I'll, I'll buy some time, but this was actually made out of cardboard. And what I've done is I've cut out the, the, the letters and then behind it, I've used a piece of EVA foam that is yellow 
to create the the kind of the yellow lettering and then on the cardboard itself i've actually painted uh, kind of a wooden motif Stuart is correct the logos are from mad max that is the uh the police force emblem because it is a you know we are in australia Dominic gets it. Escape from Australia. Well, originally that's my that's the mashup. Escape from maybe it's Escape from Melbourne, my friend. But uh, my one of my favorite films is Escape from New York. And uh, at the start of that movie, they have the New York Maximum Penitentiary. I couldn't help myself. I had to call Melbourne the Maximum Quarantine Penitentiary. So that's what I was up to this week, or oh, this last week. So I thought I'd just share it with you as just you know another piece of piece of. Uh, another project that I uh, was able to do. It's very cathartic. It, it, it's, it saved my, my, my brain space for a bit. Some of you guys might've seen that. And moving on, we have Nir, who I believe is in the chat room. So, uh, or, yeah, I think Nir is in there. So Nir has been working with some laser engraved tiles. This is one of the first offerings he's shown, shown us. I think it looks great. Um, that's actually, there's been so many people who've been working with laser tiles. That's what kind of set the topic for tonight. So near, this is a great piece of work. Um, you know, photorealistic, and I like this piece. I like it a lot. And I think you even cut the, the holder. You were saying that that came out of some Oak, if I remember correctly. So that is awesome stuff. Well done. Uh, we got Adrian. I haven't seen Adrian around here today. Um, but Adrian is also, uh, does a lot of work, um, uh, when it comes to doing laser engraved artwork and photos. So Adrian, this is another piece Adrian has done. I hope he's okay. Um, and Jeanette, no problems. You can always catch the rest of this on the replay. And we look forward to talking with you either both here at the live stream and on Facebook. And what else do we have here? We also have uh, Mace. Mace came in again, I think just recently, and he was sharing some of the works he's done using the, I think this is the Norton white tile method. It is awesome stuff. Look at that. I mean, it's pretty scary. I think he was doing some stuff for Halloween, but again, shows you the latitude that you can actually create using your laser. And it's pretty awesome. Um, tiles just work out to be really, really cool really cool so i tell you what how about this how about we jump straight in and let's start talking about how people create this type of artwork with a laser it's getting the laser to engrave on tile so we're going to talk about laser etched artwork and this is really popular to the laser community and, and basically the creation of laser etched artwork we see lots of examples of it both within the laser light the laser live stream community as well as other communities right across facebook and basically you these are created by using a laser to scan an image on a sorted bunch of different materials and then the artwork itself is kind of creates a whole new medium i think that's what i'm trying to say yeah i think that's what i'm trying to say at all and you can see there four examples of tiles that were actually created uh by the darkly lab team uh, a couple of years ago now, when I kind of saw some people playing with this and we were thinking about different ways, I had come up with a, a method to be able to go and actually create something along the lines of uh, that I had been seeing. It was a very different from the, the popular way of creating tiles, which is called the Norton White Tile Method. And, uh, and, and with the help of Dominic and, a few other, and Chris and a few other people, we were able to perfect this. We're going to talk about that uh, as well. So let's jump straight into that. Um, as I was saying, there are two, basically two different techniques that have become popular. The first one's the Norton method. And the second one, we're going to call the Darkly Labs method. Um, Dominic, I spoke to Dominic today. He's like, Darkly Labs method? There's no such thing. You came in here and I said, listen, we needed a name for it. Um, there is a website and a blog post that that talks about how to create the Darkly Labs me method. So I thought, why not name it after them? And it's very nice that they actually acknowledge some of the, the help or, or the ideas that I came in with. So it's kind of cool. Now, Stuart's asking, um, can you use colored tiles or do they have to be white? You can use colored tiles. Just understand that if there is a colored tile underneath, that is the color that you are going to actually end up, uh, you know, engraving against. Um, Kim's also asking the question, 
Are these specialized tiles? Absolutely not. You can go straight into a Home Depot or a Bunnings. You can buy a tile and you can try this out. You don't need anything specialized to be able to go and ma make this. You just need some uh, paint, uh, usually in a spray can. And uh, in fact, if you're interested, you, I'm gonna have a link in a little bit later that can that sends you to a tutorial that I made last week where you can go through and I go through how to do this in Lightburn and then take it to your laser. So it's awesome. So no problems. All right, let's go through and let's talk about the Darkly Labs method. Well, this is the method that, that we were able to develop. And um, using the laser cutter to engrave a tile on a, uh, a image on a white tile that has been prepared by spraying a layer of black paint on the surface. You can see there the arc in space image is one of the images that I made. This by using a a layer of black paint and then getting the laser to selectively remove that paint, it creates a very unique kind of image. Now here's another example here. And, and this uh, method leaves an image that feels a little bit like an old school photograph. And it really blows me away. Uh, some of the depth that you can get using the Darkly Labs method. Now there is a drawback to this method and that is that the surface needs to be cleaned and then sealed. Otherwise the paint layer can be scratched away easily. But there also has some, is some benefits to the Darkly Labs method. And that is that a large tile, a hundred by, oh no, sorry. I think it's like a 400 by 400 tile. You can do in the same time as a Norton white tile method which would be only by 100 by 100. So you can actually speed up your laser to actually create these images a lot faster. But like I said, they do need to be cleaned afterwards and they do need to be sealed. So that's an extra step. Um, you, I, you can use both a matte or a gloss tile. I tend to use gloss tiles because they're easy to get a hold of, Kim. So there you go. Let's move on with the Darkly Labs method. And there's another example. I, I'm a big Star Wars fan. And as a kid, I used to love reading the uh, the comic book anthologies of the movies because we didn't have video tape recorders and all the rest of it. And I found some black and white uh, artwork and I put that on a tile as well. So um, this next week, I'm going to be creating a walkthrough tutorial focusing on the Dark Little Labs method. So I'm going to go right from the beginning, going into Lightburn and walking through in real time how to set up this type of laser tile. And I will go through not only um, getting the tiles ready and spraying them, but at the end of the process, I'll also show you how to clean them and then seal them. So if you're interested, that will be uh, coming up this week on YouTube. If you can't wait, there is the tutorial that is sitting on the Darkly Lab site and you can get that at the link. I just realized there's two <laughs> the HTTPs, ignore the first one. It is HTTP slash darklylabs.com slash article slash masked tile engraving. So gives you an idea of some of the things that you can do. And I'm looking forward to you guys seeing that. Um, see, Dory's helping out in the, in the chat room. He's saying either will work, matte or gloss. Prefer the gloss, Norton white tile. I prefer to use beige, tan or gray paint, Rust-Oleum. Looks uh, better than white. Looks like crap when burning, but wow, after cleaning, I've got to get a chance because we're in lockdown. I haven't been able to change my, uh, all I've got is some white paint, but I'll definitely give that a shot. Talking about the Norton method, here we go. So the Norton method is very similar, but with one very different step. After layering the image, paint thinners, the paint is removed using thinners to reveal a permanent image on the tile. And that is something that, that uh, is very different. The, with this Norton white tile method, it, the image is actually engraved into the ceramic white part of the tile. You can't get rid of it. On the video that I had just released, I took a paint scrape and tried to chip it away. You can't do it. In fact, uh, Nikki Norton, seeing the post and the video actually posted up taking a orbital sander with 220 grit sandpaper to a tile and could not remove it. It looked fantastic. So if you want to do permanent tiles, you can definitely do it this way. And in fact, I'm going to show you guys kind of, oh, well, I'll, I'll keep going, but then I'm going to show you a real time example. And um, so the Norton method creates permanent images that do not need, does not need to be sealed at all. And the Norton method also takes a little longer to create. Now, one of the things that I, discovered is that if you run this process higher than 
a, a thousand mil per minute, the white paint that you paint the tile with um, gets engraved, but it doesn't go through to the enamel. And then, and then what end, ended up happening, and again, I had an example of this in the video, is that when I went to clean the paint off, it, it left the tile absolutely pristine. It did not actually engrave into the tile. So my my suggestion to everyone, to, and of, of course this depends on a machine, but if you're using an emblazer, maybe a core or a two, um, you don't want to run this process any higher than a thousand mils per minute. Um, I got a fantastic result of that. And let me see, let me show you guys right. Oh, look, you know what? I'm going to change, this is going to be a problem because I'm going to change the focus. There's my tile right there. So that is the tile. I don't know if you can see there, but it's actually in the surface. You, I couldn't, I can't get rid of this. That image is going to stay as long as uh, I actually have that tile. The only way I'm going to be able to do that sort of thing is to be able to go and break it. So uh, let me just go and see if I can get another nice focus on me. Because see, I, I don't have the fancy cameras with the automatic focus. Um, and just to give you an idea of the difference, this is a tile. You can see it's it's actually um, it's actually sealed. This is a tile that I did a while ago. That's uh, again, see, all all my film stuff has to come through. But big fan of the old TBC series Battlestar Galactica. I'm just trying not to get the light to bounce off it. You can see the difference between. I wish this one was just a little bit bigger, but you can see kind of the difference between it. This is more like a photography kind of experience. And this one's a little bit more like, you know, this is like etched in into the actual tile itself. The idea, I actually want to put, if I ever build a, ho a house, I'm going to put this tile in my bathroom. I think, I don't know. I just really like the artwork and I like the story. So there are two examples. The time to make this one and the time to make this one equal. Okay, so just a little bit of heads up on that one. That took about two hours. This one took about two hours. So that you know, just take that into consideration. You can make bigger tiles using the darkly method, uh, but not as permanent. If I wanted to and scrape this, it will damage it. It will actually take the paint off. But again, it leaves a lot more in there. And the other thing that you want to do in with this method and i'll go through that in the tutorial is you want your artwork to be a negative right so you're not burning in in this case it's a positive image that we're burning into excuse me into the tile here and in here we want to remove the black to create the image and that so two real big differences i'm just going to put that away so i don't scratch it so you know you've got some really kind of cool um potential with 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 working with these tiles and they're pretty cool let me go back we, we were talking about that we were talking about that one uh we talked about that and if you if you guys want more information about it this is something that i've been playing with i'm not an expert i mean i've just started playing with the norton white tile method but uh you know the other method i've been doing for for some time um guys go and join the norton's den of lasers on facebook these guys have been doing that constantly these guys go and they just put up amazing images which you can see in these slides and they're just refining how to to create this so feel free um you know nikki norton has been very kind we've been talking for a couple of years now and it's just been amazing to be able to see what he he's been able to do and share so dory's sharing with us right now in the chat room that he has an atom stack uh, A520 watt, I run the images on the light side of 900 speed, 70 power, Stucky Dither. It's interesting that you're using Stucky, but that's okay. If the result's too light, color the entire tile with a black Sharpie and then clean with alcohol. Awesome. That's an interesting idea. And near sharing. Thanks, Gil. The holder was made out of 8 mil MDF. Awesome. That's really cool. Now, as I was mentioning before, I'm not afraid to ask for help. And in fact, um, oh, there you go. If, if you're interested in the Norton method, I forgot all about this. There is right now live a tutorial where that I go through it step by step. Feel free to catch to catch that if you haven't caught it before. There's a link in there. Uh, you might want to just take a photo of the screen or uh, you, you know what you can if you go to my channel, you, it's definitely there and we go through and create that very tile that I was showing you before. That little white tile is we made that live and we go through all the steps so if you want an idea on how to to work through the norton method north i'm going to say the norton white tile method there's a lot of norton methods 
feel free to go and actually have that conversation conversation with them. Get to know them. They're a pretty interesting group. Very interesting group. Uh, lots of people trying lots of different things. And in fact, I reached out to Nikki and he actually put me on to a great guy called Marcy. Marcin, and Marcin has been working uh, with uh, Nikki and his group for quite some time, and he was kind enough to actually have a quick interview with me. Now, in, in from Marcin lives in uh, in London, so right now it's like first thing in the morning he works. So I'm gonna go through to the interview, and he, and Marcin has some very very interesting information when it comes to creating tiles, especially with the Norton method. So, Marcin, thank you so much for coming and spending some time with us here at the Laser Livestream. You're actually all the way over in London. First of all, how are you? Are you guys safe over there? We've been dealing with a lockdown. Maybe that's because we're the criminals. Like, you know, everyone in the UK said all the uh, Australians. All, to you, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe we're in lockdown again. But how's everything going over there? It's much better, much better. People don't care about the lockdown anymore, to be honest. Yeah. They lift all the restrictions. So it's much better. It's going back to normal. Awesome. So uh, yeah. I'm glad. I, I'm glad. It's just for us here. We've been in lockdown for quite some time, and we have people all around Australia, and there's different levels. So unfortunately, I live in a city where we've been locked down, probably almost coming up to a year. So you know what? It gives me lots of time to play with my laser and learn <laughs> some some really kind of cool stuff. So let's start at the beginning. You obviously, um, you well, we're talking to you today because you create these amazing laser scan pieces on tile using uh, the Nicky Norton me method. And when I was speaking to Nicky, he pointed me to you as one of his favorite protégés, someone who's been able to kind of master his technique, which is right. You know, Nicky's work has inspired so many people to go out with their laser and actually create pieces of art and different renditions of images in a completely different way. How did you begin? But it was quite easy start. I just seen a second-hand Alex Miker. Okay. A simple laser you can buy it. It was quite cheap. Someone asked 100 pounds for it, so it was cheap. I, was, I just get it. And started looking on a, on a different website, different forums, and came across Nikki. He said, yeah, come to me. So, right, okay. And he just, first thing first, he threw at me a guide section, which was already almost ready, not complete, but sure. he, he just started at the time. Say there you there you go read it and come back to me. I said right, uh, that's a very nice man. Yeah. Anyway, I start doing just start testing and slowly, slowly me and Nikki we just keep sharing the what we're doing. Everything is Nikki's work anyway. He don't know that about he's he's genius. He, he is just amazing. Make up guy. Yeah, he just make up everything. He's it's up to all credits going to Nikki. No one else. Simple as. But I try to lift up every time I try to lift up a little bit his technique. Not really lift up his technique, but I use different paints. I try to adjust a little bit, making it a little bit better tight than Nikki. So next week, Nikki make it a little bit better. And this is how we start lifting up. We winded up each other, you know what I mean? And yeah, this is how I start really. And was the uh, first one was, was Alex Maker, then it was all updates and obviously. It has to update or upgrade the laser. It's not gonna it's gonna work straight out of the box, but to make a decent style or like perfect style, you need upgrades. It's not gonna work straight out of the box. Right. So so you've you've got this laser. Is this part of a hobby? Is this part of work for hobby. you? Ob only hobby. I was thinking, well, I can do work. I already can order. I got also a bigger laser at the moment. I got hundred volts CO2. I I can do it, but still, I prefer doing this as a hobby. Right. It's it's not ties that I need to rush with the product. I can do when I want, how I want, and as good as I want. You know. You know, I I totally agree with that. There's a lot of people who say to me, and through the live streams, through the community that we're building here, quite a few people have reached out and said, you know, Gil, I've got a I've got a job, but I can't finish it. Do you want to do it? And they get shocked to to discover that I don't actually make things to sell. I'm actually, yes. a, it's a it's a maker's journey. It's about sharing what we know and, and being able to inspire people to take what, what exactly what you were talking about. Nikki had a method and then you, you went in, you tweaked it, you shared back and forth, you improved it. Uh, you know, that to me is really inspiring because I know what I'm going to make. I make it all the time. But what you guys are going to make, what you make and the artwork that, that you've been able to perfect as a hobby is just outstanding. 
So it's it's pretty amazing. Now, the laser that you got, the first laser that you have, was that a diode or a CO2 laser? No, the first one was diode. That was simple LX Maker A3 Pro. Yep. Two, yep. Vo- two volts, two and a half volts uh, laser, diode laser. And that's the perfect diode for the ties, the Nikki's technique. It's not other better options. It's a range of voltage, which is going from 1.5, I would say, to two and a half as the best range for the Nikki's technique. Right. I tried with this different voltage and it doesn't work like it should. Excellent. That's very cool. I have here a what they call an Emblazer 2, which is an Australian made laser, very similar when it comes to this, you know, to the the uh, power range of what you're talking about and again i think it's a really good machine for for this technique and a lot of people come in you will you would have i don't know if you were alive when we started but we showcase people's work every week and a lot of work that comes through are laser scanned images uh either on tiles or on cork or on different materials using the same technique now i'm, I'm going to make an assumption here but the the technique that you were finding with nikki we, what software were you using to actually create the images? To be honest, it's not much for Nikki's technique. Nothing else apart of simple soft to resize, to cut to size, and then light bulb only. You light don't need bit. to do any editing. It's just light bulb only. You don't need anything. You can use others, but no. Did you ever adjust the images in a fo- in like Photoshop or any kind of uh, photo editing? Because I know that there's a big push to use different um, like actions that you can buy and put into Photoshop or no. go and process an image after. Because the images that I'm showing here, as we're talking, some of these are some of the examples of your work. They're stunning. They're absolutely stunning. And to know that you got the results you that you did in Lightburn without having to touch up the images at all, it's just phenomenal. To be honest, them ties which you got, they nothing else, just a cut to size to 10 by 10 centimeters, 100 by 100 millimeters in uh, GIMP, that's all. Right. And everything else is light bulb only. I will advise people not to waste money or any play, play to other, a, a part of light bulb on, on anything else. It's no need for that to create a good type. No need for what's Awesome. You know what? Um, Lightburn recently came out in uh, with an, a, a a new, uh, it's not a plugin, but a new feature where you can actually adjust things like yeah. contrast uh, within Lightburn itself. And that's something that yeah. had been missing. I actually, before I met Nikki, I was playing with the same idea of using tiles because I knew they were out there. I came up with a completely different technique. It's not as permanent and it's actually almost the reverse of, of how Nikki makes his tiles. And we'll leave a link below for people who want to go and see this technique. It's very easy and it and it's, it's, creates a very um, uh, you know permanent etched image within a tile that that is incredibly stunning. Just out of curiosity, do you have any tips for people who want to go and try this out? Now, within Lightburn, there's different ways of scanning an image into yes. uh, onto a tile. What have you found to be the best, re- give you the best result? I said two options. All depends from the image. It's uh, it's quite tricky, but Jarvis, Jarvis and uh, Stucky Dittering, that's the two best deterrents for the for, for light method. Nothing else. No new sprint, nothing else. Obviously, no grayscale. Much, much looking good on the paper, but it's not not gonna go work with that method. So Jarvis and Stusky. Same then the resolution. You can try with any laser. To be honest, a ballpark for any laser doesn't matter what voltage is 254 DPI to 318 DPI. Keep right in that range, and you will be okay. Wow. Everything else and everything less is not gonna work. That, that's amazing to hear. I know there's a lot of people who are playing around with trying to pe- perfect this idea of scanning. And especially, it does take a little bit of time. I don't know. What's the average time for a tile that you're etching right now? It's about two hours for a 10 mil, by, uh, no, 100 mil by 100 mil. It's about two hours time. Right. You're going slow. Same. That's another important thing. People try to push the speed. In that method, a speed is always the same. It's between 1,000 to 1200 was that millimeters by minute it's always the same speed it doesn't matter what voltage it has to be right in that range yeah I, you know what i my experience is as well that if you start actually pushing it uh faster you 
you don't get such a clear image and sometimes yeah. there's slippage in the belts uh at least yeah. i've had that experience where you can see the image just creeps a little bit uh to the side all the time uh yeah. makes it, it makes a very cool technique i must say uh but it's something that you probably don't want i i like those sort of things i like discovering when uh you know there, there's a little bit of a, a difference but you know in most people's eyes that's an error so you know yeah. do you have an image that you really love that you made that like you went you said this image this is this is this is my number one i got two the, the one which i sent you the cat yes that's stunning cat is, uh, i think that that's the one and uh and the turtle i don't know i'm not sure if he sent you a yep. turtle there uh, i've got yeah, a turtle one too and the turtle that that was uh, something else which i tried i tried to go away from the blacks on mm -hmm. the turtle and i done it i used different paint and tried to go like fully gray scale no awesome. blacks whatsoever and i think it does works on that side so yeah, then two, there was like two biggest ones I ever met. No, th those, both of them, I you know, are stunning and we just shared them as you were talking, uh, those images. I'm just curious, apart from using your lasers for to, to create artwork and to create these photorealistic images, what else do you use your lasers for? To be honest, just messing about, just making, to be honest, I'm not happy with like final product, never. I'm never happy, that's the truth. I always can see something. Always. You're a true maker. Yeah, I always can see something. I'm not happy. Most of the time, probably out of the 10, one is the one which I say, yeah, that's the good one. Most of them. If you will really look around up here, it's a pile of dust everywhere. <laughs> Listen, yeah, that's... if I would turn the camera and you see all, you can even see the stuff behind me. You know, everything is a job that's, that's still in process. Yeah. I don't know about you. When I finish a job, there's a part of me that goes, ah what next i kind of yeah, exactly. how do i refine exactly. it how do i let, exactly. let me do it again again you know my personal uh motif when it comes to learning is when you get one done the way you're happy with it you've got to repeat the process three or four times so that you yeah. understand what can happen you can understand yes. what's going on and again that's one of the things that i love about laser technology this all started in factories this the lasers were designed for manufacturing and here we are being able, you know, in this day and age to, to have an affordable laser and play and then software like Lightburn that, that just can turn your laser into into something completely different. When print and cut came out for me, it just changed the way I created because not only could I repeat something, but now I could use other processes. I could put things in my printer. I could uh, I could actually do pieces that were bigger than uh, what I could fit in one pass on the laser. So for me, it's like, you know, that that's what I'm always interested in. But there's such a great community out there for people to create these images on different media. And that's it blown me away. There's so many people out there who are just creating these amazing pieces. I know that some people who sell them, some people are just, as you said, it's just a hobby. It's just something to 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 wrap your, your mind around. But I think if you can get it done on a tile, why not put an image on the on a, a smartphone? Why not put it on your laptop? Why not put it on anything? Yeah. And again, that to me is is a complete form of artwork. I showed that on uh, Nikki's group. I showed that that was a piece of ceramic, very simple images, and then being sold in London in one of the posh, expensive shops. They cost four hundred pounds. Uh, a small engraving, which will be probably about ten inches, not even ten inches, like. Sure less than that and was costing on the piece of ceramic 400 pounds so that's a lot of money for like literally two hours a job you're probably inspiring a lot of people to go out there and see whether or not they can make a, a small engravings and, oh. and, and send it out yeah that's awesome and that funny thing was with the one of the gravies i seen it that was exactly the same picture we used in the nikki's group like a couple of months ago it yep. was exactly the same picture, and that picture was on a piece of ceramic in one of the expensive shops in London. Sure. I mean, you know what? They always say it's not it's not how much it costs you to make. It's how much someone's willing to pay. Exactly. And, you know, again, the, I see laser, kind of laser artwork become, becoming a whole new, different uh, kind of franchise. Uh, I think that, you know, as time goes on, and especially as... Uh, more people get a hold of this technology and start understanding processes. It's pretty amazing. I, you know, I'm blown away. Like, as I said, there there's, we have a number of people who are watching this live who,
who are working through this process. Uh, do you have any words? Or I mean, we're talking about hints, but do you ever have a, have something that didn't work that you felt to yourself? Hang on, what's going on? I'm yeah. not too sure what's happening. And how did you come around yeah. to to solving the problem? Because I know there are uh, we in our in our group. You know, there's some people who get frustrated in, in in working with lasers, and there is a little bit of an uphill battle. And of course, there's a safety factor in there as well. You don't want to be uh, putting every, you know just scrap or yeah. something else in a laser without knowing it. What 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 do you recommend when you get to that uphill battle and you you're not too sure where to go? one of the most important factors in a laser, anything, is a focus. Focusing is a number one priority. Right. Forget about anything else. Forget about power. Forget about the speed. Forget about editing. If you got the focus right, focal distance right, and I mean right, it's not about, yeah, that's a good, that's 10 millimeters. No, we're talking about the less than that, on the really, really small factors of, of the distance. And the second thing, which people, I don't know why, but stay simple. And I mean stay simple from the from the beginning to the end. With that, your machine, don't put any, I don't, I know, you're doing that 3D printing, but don't put any 3D printed junk on it. It's right. not working that way. <laughs> the, less, the less things on the laser, the less things can fail, the less things can make an impact on your final product. Sure. So stay as simple as possible. If you don't need to use something, don't use it. Just get rid of it. It was, uh, I'm very, very uh, against the drug chains to sort out your cables. I hate them. You right. can see them. I can see them on every single picture when people are doing I can see them. And people, oh, well, no, that's okay. No, I can see them. I can tell you exactly which part of the drug chain was on the, on the floor, on the, on the table, and when it was on the, up in the air. I can see it. Right. But, yeah, stay simple and focus. That's the two most important parts. Awesome. Awesome. I think, you know, it, it's so one of the things that I love uh, doing this live stream is I speak to people from all around the world. And when we start talking lasers, it always comes down to these fundamentals, like, you know, just keep it simple, understand that it, yeah. when it comes to, to, to working with the laser, it's power and speed. They're the two things you want to concentrate on. I love the idea. When you first said 3D printed parts, I was like, I know some people who have 3D printed a part and then they put the part in the laser to engrave it. And I always think to myself going, why didn't you just put it in the design? 3D printers, yeah. because they're so selective, they can create that engraved image kind of uh, fonts or, or, yeah. or whatever. You, you, you're making another, um, another step of it. And of course, plastic being plastic, you don't want to put too much energy yeah. into it because yeah. it'll change, it'll become a goo, it, you know, or it'll atomize and end up on your lens, which you don't want to do. But I think that, you know, what you're sharing here is gold, especially for a lot of the people here who are invested in working with their lasers mainly to, to create these images. And they're, they're amazing. How long have you been a part of Nikki, you know, been working with Nikki in, in, in his Facebook group? It's more than a year now. It's well over, oh, cool. over the year at the moment. So yes, it's, I probably was one of the first one which was following Nikki and stay with Nick all the time. So it's, well, I'm doing more CO2 job at the moment, more CO2 cravings than diode at the moment. It's, it's much faster. That's the, that's the reason. So, so on a on a CO two laser, does the time change for for how long, how fast you can you can do a, a tile? Yes. Well, I'm not really. I'm not doing the tiles with CO two. Okay. It's a waste of time. It's, sure. I'm not doing Nikki's method with the uh, with the CO two. It's just waste of time. Okay. It looks okay. You can do some something simple vectors. Fine. Because how to achieve the good engraving, uh, vector engraving on CO2 laser is quite simple. Just raise the DPI as high as possible, and that will overburn each layer. So that would create quite dark vector engraving. But if you try to do the pictures, it's not going to work. So I think that's amazing because, you know, there's so much talk about, you know, uh, people will go, what kind of laser do I want to buy? And someone will say, go get a diode laser. And someone else, uh, someone else will go, that's a child's toy. You don't want that. You want a CO2 laser. You want a 100 watt laser. But it's really, I think it's so cool, good to hear uh, because you have both and you have invested yeah. quite a bit of time in this technique that a, a CO2 laser is not the type of laser you want to do this sort of artwork with because of its frequency, because of the way it works. Yeah. Where a diode laser, which people were like, well, it doesn't cut perspex, therefore it's not a real laser. You know, um, <laughs> But it's perfect for, for, for creating this type of artwork. 
Well, the thing is, CO2 laser, to, to get them right, if I, like some of them, they has to go fast. And when you're going fast, you're not going to do the nitty, nitty method. No chance. Yep. By 100, 100 volt, I have to go with the speed when doing the photos above 400 millimeters per second. Right. When with the, with the small diode, I'm doing 1,200 millimeters per minute. So that's right. a massive difference. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, it's, it's not to get the two words, you need two lasers. It's right. simple as right. And, and and the right tool for the right job. And again, yeah. that you know, one of the things that it, it, I don't want to say it bothers me, but it's just it's so interesting because and I've seen this on Nikki's group. I'm a member of Nikki's group. Uh, you know, I've posted, I've recently started posting up some uh, some videos, and 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 thankfully, you know. They, they, Nikki's group's been good. There's other other groups who are like, you don't know what you're talking about, but it's it's it amazes me that someone will have one type of laser. They'll use it for a month. And they're a master. They know the whole thing. They know exactly what's going on uh, right across the board. So again, it's great to hear someone who has both uh, both a diode and a CO2 laser actually explain explaining and 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 sharing with us that. You know these two different types of lasers do two different jobs with two with the same application yeah. so it's that's pretty cool it's not only uh ties we don't we're talking about that ties because that's nikki's technique but also wood for best picture i'm gonna use i will use diode and not co2 i can do some yeah. probably decent uh, engravings with co2 but i will use diode and i don't think the Anything else can be there. I can send you give me a second. Sure. Just go now. We'll see the, the best diode and the best CO2. And again, that it's just one of those kind of really interesting factors because I think diode lasers just get a really bad rap. They you know, a lot of people think because no. you know it's not a hundred watt. And right now, no. you know, there's been some talk about combining multiple diodes into a, a stronger stream, but the truth of the matter is yeah. a lot of that energy is is lost in transmission anyway. Yes. But it's not that, a... like you said. It's not about the power. Yeah. It was, it's about using what you got. Same with the craziness, and I see this on the forums, on the groups. People, are, I done this five hundred DPI. I done this thousand DPI. I done well, and so on. Look how it looks. It looks absolutely disgusting. Right. The, to get the details, sometimes you have to go quite low with the DPI. Sometimes I go out so low up to 96 DPI for some reason. Sure. A picture what I want, it only gonna work with that DPI. This is what I do, you're gonna attach it. No sure. worries. Thank you for sharing those images or both with a with DPI, uh with sorry, with a CO2 and Di with, with a diode yeah. laser. I mean again it's great. Um what's what do you want to do with a laser in the future? I, I I'm assuming you're going to continue working with, with these photo realistic images. Do you have plans of what you want to explore with laser technology? To be honest, I got some ideas. Most of the time, my ideas well, that's all anyway. But I got some ideas, and uh, yeah, not not really. What what we plan to do? We try to go away on a diode system from the belts because they right. causing a lot of trouble. We just thinking we try, we try a completely different approach. It really doesn't work. It works for some folks. It works better than some of but you can still see artifacts on the tiles. We just try to get something which won't impact as much as is as, as it is at the moment. It's nothing given that clear results at the moment. It doesn't matter what we're using. We got some ideas which I don't want to talk at the that's moment okay. because that, they, that's all right. they are a little bit. But yeah, we 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 might get something soon, maybe later had, than sooner. I had the experience, and I hope I'm not giving anything away. But this is I'll talk about my experience that uh, when I started working with 3D printers, we had the same problem with belts, and we ended up using fishing wire. So what we ended up doing, or fishing line, not not wire, but the nylon fishing line that could take a lot of uh, uh, strength. You know, when you're when you're fishing with with uh, you know fish pulling on on the on the reel without snapping, and we actually wrapped it around. So we kind of created a belt, but because that tension was always there, when it would move back and forth, it wouldn't it wouldn't transmit the uh, the slippage as such. So I don't know if that's something you're thinking about, but um, on, on kind of a gantry system that kind of worked on some of these early 3D printers, but I've never seen it adopted anywhere else. So I thought I'd just share with that. And 
the other thing I was going to share with you is when I got my my laser, when I first started cutting uh, or, or scanning images, I had this really interesting experience where it almost looked like there was a circle um, kind of etched as it was as it was scanning up. There was this kind of circle there, and I wasn't too sure what was going on. Luckily, the uh, emblazer um, is actually made here in Melbourne, and I happen to know the people who do it so it took us about a month of trialing to work out what had happened my machine was second hand and what we found out was that someone had put some uh some pvc in the machine cut it cut releasing chlorine gas yes and what we didn't realize was that on one of the cogs it had actually eaten away the rubber and fused it to the cog so there was a little bit of material there and of course as the belts were going it just tightened up the belt as it was being kind of scanning back and forth and that was actually creating a kind of like a, a halo and a ring effect but that took a long time to work out what was going on so again you know it, it's it's one of those things of being able to understand the process also helps out when you run into problems it's a lots of things that uh, i know it's small but even a piece of dust piece of rubber yep. anything a dirt can create through problems and you can see it straight away Nitty, nit, nitty's technique is so challenging and literally everything is any imperfection and you're gonna see it on the picture especially I, with the nature of scanning an image it is you know when you talk about dpi we're talking about like not only the laser pulsing its power to remove a certain amount of uh, of paint but you're also talking about dpi as in the line that that is yes. being you know one line go go and then another line as, as the laser head is being scanned across. And of course, anything like that is going to, to, to yeah. come up. You know, uh, we don't have earthquakes here in Australia. We don't have, um, we're not around the tectonic plates. But a week ago, we actually got hit by the biggest earthquake Australia's ever felt, which was a 5.9. And I, I thought immediately, I was like, gosh, if I was scanning something, that would have been all, that, that laser head would have been bouncing back and forth. It would have been interesting. It would have been a one of a kind kind of you know yeah, geometric uh, be... experience. Oh, it's, it's a very even the you know that so you got a step of driver, step of motors, even the wrong rear on the and the, I mean a small difference in voltage, a small sure. point one point create a massive issues on the ties, massive. So just testing, testing is the only way to do it, and we're not. To, now people are lucky if they go to Nikki's group. It's a wide section which I, every newbie has, has to read it. Go through them, go through them a couple of times. I'm doing this technique for a more than year, and I'm still going up there. I'm still going and checking it. what Nikki created in that group. is just amazing. It's a yeah. bible. I agree. It's for everything. I agree. It's for everything. Um, for those of you who are watching and haven't uh, haven't be, uh, become a part of Nikki's group, we're going to put a, a link below so you can go and join uh Marcin, thank you so much for coming out and and having a chat with us it's this sort of you know conversation that i really want to uh, instill within the laser community and i know that sometimes it can get a little rough you know people can get can get really kind of set in their techniques or or, or you know the information they have but being able to share this out there um especially for the people who haven't tried it it is awesome to be able to to have it. And thank you so much for taking the time out. I know that you're on the other side of the planet. Uh, thank you so much for coming on board. And, and I hope that you'll come and join us again and we can talk uh, shop, lasers, take and show some of the other amazing pieces of work that you uh, that you create. You know, we can... Yeah. Like I say, join our group and we are there to share and to help. It's no one gonna share our techniques. I'm just giving away techniques, what we're doing, especially on plywood. I was sitting with people over the night, with some lads from the US, Canada. Just come, sit down. If you're willing to listen, you will get it. Yep. If you're not willing to listen. And the invitation's also the other way too. We have a community on Facebook and we would love you to join and, and share some of the things that you make as well. And, you know, if it, I, let, let's, as I said, let's keep this going and, yeah. and let's, let's all share. Uh, Marcin, thank Sorry, you so right? much. All right, yeah, no problem. Take care. Take care. See Thank See you. you later. Wow. All right. <laughs> Let me take my headphones off. Okay. I want, again, I know <laughs> it's kind of funny. We're running out of time there. Um, so Marzen had to, had to jump off. But I want to thank Marzen for taking that time out and having a conversation with me. 
I learned a lot from talking to him. You know, there's some points in that conversation that really hit home for me. I love the fact that uh, that someone other than me, because I keep saying it all the time, but someone was actually saying, you know what, diode lasers are great for these engravings. CO2 lasers, yeah, they can do them, but the way a diode laser works allows you to get a better result. And that's one of the things that's a bit of a pet peeve of mine when people go, oh, you work with lasers. What kind of lasers do you work with? And I go, diode lasers, and they go, that's a toy. And I'm like, yeah, okay, so I'm not gonna pump out 150 watts of, you know, and cut through 15 inches of perspex. But you know what? Diode laser is like a scalpel. Like a sur in a surgeon's hand, you can get some great results out of it. And it was just really great that in an organic conversation, Marzen was saying to it, saying, you know what? I'm doing this with diode lasers. It is really, really cool. Um, let's go back to the chat room because people were talking throughout that, which was fantastic. It was great to see a lot of the conversations talking about the inspiration that they were getting from Marzen to try out this method and go back to it. Um, Dominic saying, what a nice guy. He's a classic maker. Absolutely. He's so excited about sharing his knowledge. One of the things that I love about the maker community and definitely got me inspired you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but I've been on YouTube now, what is it, five years? And, fi you know, finally sharing some of the stuff that I'm most passionate about, which is kind of great. So, uh, so, you know, again, someone who who's out there, you'll definitely see him on Nikki's, uh, Nikki's Facebook group. Maybe we can get him to share some of the stuff over here too. It is awesome to see. I uh, also want to say uh, hello to Brian. Brian just came in. Um, Brian said earlier on that he's only starting out trying to save up to get himself a Thunder Laser and wanted a recommendation for a diode laser that he can start using and start maybe training himself up on light burn. Um, I've got to be honest with you, the laser that I use is the one that I recommend. It's a it's an Emblazer 2, but in that range, they have a thing called an Emblazer Core. And if you're handy with your hands, and I've got a feeling you might be, Brian, this is a kit that you can put together. And a lot of people uh, in the community here on the laser live stream, they have Emblazer 2s or in, or Emblazer cores. And uh, they are a little bit more versatile because they're open frame. You do have to wear some glasses, make sure that you don't damage your eyes. Uh, but the laser unit is the same in the two as it is in the core. So um, definitely go check that out. Um, I know that uh, if you're around, I don't know where you're located, Brian, Possibly in Australia, I have noticed there's a number of lasers that were picked up at the start of all the lockdowns. And uh, in fact, I think I saw a advert for an Emblazer Core uh, on Facebook. So there you go. You might be able to pick something up uh, that has only a few a few hours on it until you get your big machine. And I'm also curious, Brian, what do you, what's your plans? What do you what do you want to make with your laser? I think it's really interesting to see where everyone comes in. Again, if you look through some of the comments I uh, on my YouTube uh, videos, I'm always asking people, what is it that you make with your laser? And I'm always fascinated to hear how they've taken people have taken this technology and applied it in their either their businesses or their hobbies. So it is awesome to see. So guys, I hope that helped bring a, a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of knowledge to the idea of taking uh, images and engraving them, whether you do them on tiles, slate, or, or canvas, or anything else. You know, it is a pretty amazing uh, application of laser technology. And you can see there that, I, that, again, we've been playing it out. And again, I invite you guys to check out the video that I put up about the Norton White Tile Method. I'll walk you all the way through it. And later this week, I'm going to release on Monday morning my time uh, so it's Melbourne time, which is actually now an hour earlier because we're on daylight savings. I realize there's a few people here that normally are here probably missed out because of the time difference. We're going to release what I'm calling the Darkly Labs method. And that's the method that I showed you, uh, the larger tiles that it's more kind of like a printed photograph. So I hope you will come and check that out as well. All right. So you know what? That's the main meat of this uh, episode of the laser live stream but before we go we do have the good and the bad and the ugly but before we get to that talking about sharing knowledge i'm there's a big call out here for uh people to share their tips and tricks from the community i want to do a big special before the end of the year where we take everyone's tips and tricks so every live stream we like to help each other sharing some of the lessons we learned along the way send me your favorite tip or trick 
multiple if you have, to laser.livestream at gmail.com or alternatively, you can catch me on Facebook. Um, if there's something that you've learned, if there's something that's changed the way that you make things with the laser, feel free to share them and we're going to put them together. And I've got a feeling that the best tip and trick may get a Christmas present from yours truly. We'll see how that goes. But uh, that's the plan. Uh, Malcolm is sharing that the Emblazer Core is super easy to put together, Brian. It does get you thinking about how the laser actually works and understands it well. And again, if you're curious at the amount of work that's needed, there is a video. Um, if you go into the description there, I do have a video where in fact, I I put one together at um, in, at Darkly Labs with uh, the help of Ben and uh, and Ben knows more about lasers than I do. Uh, but we did it all in an afternoon. It was an awesome build. So it's kind of cool. Uh, Brian sharing with us that he's a wood machinist by trade. So advanced CNC. Awesome. I also do wood engravings and cuttings. I'd love to see some of your work. Brian, join up the Facebook group and share some of the stuff you do. Not just the laser stuff, also the, the stuff on CNC. Is a laser? CNC, as far as I'm concerned. It's a computer controlled device, that's for sure. Dominic's going, oh, Christmas presents? Yes, Dominic, you and I will talk about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to de definitely walk about it. Um, maybe, maybe we can get that. Uh, no, it's okay. I'll, I'll say things people will be like, get a fiber laser and call it E3. Uh, no, we won't. We won't do that. We were joking about that last time. So, uh, so tips and tricks. That's going to lead us straight into the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's see if I can whistle this this time. <laughs> there you go. I think I probably just got a copyright violation, but that's okay. Probably the first time I was able to actually whistle that theme. The good and the bad and the ugly is where we look at different types of materials. And today we are looking at a good material. That material happens to be felt. And felt is one of the oldest forms of fabric known to, man to mankind or humankind. It actually pred predates weaving and knitting. Um, if you're going to use felt, there are different types, but always try to use 95 to 100% wool. Uh, felt wool, sorry, felt wool that is usually sold for doll making, which comes in a multitude of colors. So, uh, you know, try to make sure that your felt is... Uh, as pure as possible because you don't want them adding other things into it that can uh, that can when you're cutting it or burning it that uh, will stick to your lens or your diode and destroy your laser. All right, let's move on. Um, this is an example of some felt coasters and people made. When using a laser cutter, make sure you turn on your air assist. You don't want to, your your felt to catch a light. This is a fabric that will. Uh, catch a light uh, if you put enough energy into it and also make sure that those cuts are clean. You can engrave and cut felt to make interesting uh, layers and other items. So check that out. Felt is something that a lot of people don't think about using in a laser. It is an amazing piece of mat natural material, natural fiber that you can use. And you know what? I think there may be some chips and some tricks coming out on how to cut felt from some of the users here who do use it. So I just wanted to throw that out there and let people know, um, you know, another great piece of material that you can use in your laser. So it's kind of cool. We've gone a little long today. I know I try to bring it up to an hour, but I know we missed out last week. So let's wrap it up there. If you happen to start out with light burn or lasers and you want a little bit of help outside of what we, pro we provide here on the laser live stream or on the Facebook group, I do virtual classes on one-on-one -on -one tuition. If you happen to be in Melbourne, I'm happy to come and uh, as long as we're out of lockdown, come and work with you. If not, we can do it in virtual uh, classes. Those sessions are now open. It's always great to work one-on-one -on -one with with other users. Um, usually, sometimes it's just, you know, I, I want to do this and I'm not too sure what's going on or, hey, I've got an idea for a project. I want to talk through it. Uh, if you're interested get in contact with me at laser.livestream at gmail.com. Um, I think recently I there was I was got in touch before the, the major lockdown with an amazing uh, magician who had bought a Emblazer 2 and just wanted to go through with it uh, or go through it uh, with someone. And I'm just keen to see the incredible things that he's going to create. Although I got to be honest with you, I was told if I show it to you, you can't share it because, you know, magicians can't share their secrets. So, you know, maybe that's why he's not actually sharing with us, but uh, it is going to be uh, pretty cool. Now, uh, in the chat room, Stuart says, are we going to be back next week? No, we're going to bounce this two weeks. So we've just shifted the the two-week kind of rotation um, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I 
to put this together in, in one week is not going to give me enough time, unfortunately. I'd love to be able to do it. Maybe we'll do an informal thing. Maybe we'll do something on Facebook. We'll see. But uh, Stuart, we will be back in two weeks' time. So thanks for asking. Uh, Mal is asking us, what's the best supplier for felt? Try um, Spotlight. Try Lincraft. Um, I know you can buy felt from $2 shops. Not too sure about that sort of stuff, but uh, go and ask. So that'll be kind of kind of cool. Uh, and in blazer to a uh, used in blazer to Dominic. Is that the Christmas present? Yeah, uh, Adrian wants the E three. Uh, <laughs> it'll be interesting. You guys, are, I lo I love uh, talking with and messing around with you guys. So we got the virtual class. I also want to say uh, before we leave, thank you so much to Darkly Labs. Dominic's with us here today, and thank you so much to uh, Lightburn, and of course that's Jason. Uh, for making sure that we can uh, come in here and be able to join every two weeks. We do this twice a month. It is an awesome thing. Guys, I know, you know, last week we were supposed to do this. Um, not to not to harp on it, but I hope you guys got something out of it. I've been looking at it. I would love to get more people in here on the live stream. We want to, let's build this up as much as we can. If you are working with people, if you know people who are interested in lasers, and are not just interested in watching a tutorial, but wants to wants to get involved, wants to wants to work with a whole bunch of people. Let them know what's going on. This we are growing. It's great to see the amount of people who've been coming into the Facebook group, but they had no idea about the live stream. So let's see if we can get them coming in here. So it's all going to be cool. Dominic says, Malcolm, contact us. One of our staff knows where to get nice felt from. There you go. Uh, Mal sharing. Okay, I didn't want to try the two dollar shop as you couldn't be sure what the makeup of it. I agree. There you go. Dominic is offering. He's got a staff member who knows where to get felt. So there you go. That's awesome. See, see, it's exactly what we're talking about. People helping other people. That's community, baby. That's community. That's what we want to do here, guys. That's it for me. We're just coming in under an hour and a half. Whoa, big long live stream today. Again, I want to thank Marzen and I want to thank Nikki Norton for supporting uh this live stream both of them are incredible great people go and check out nikki's den of lasers on facebook group but also if you haven't been to to us before go down below and hit that subscribe button and go and join also the facebook group so it is totally awesome uh kim sharing with us really quickly that uh i used a felt art at school uh in the art room that was stiffened with cardboard in the middle to make two layers. I buy it from Zart Art. I know Zart Art. I know those guys. They are big suppliers of schools in uh, Victoria. Thank you so much, Kim, for, for letting us know that. Artistic craft stores have felt. There's lots of felt out there. Just make sure to ask them that it's uh, between 80 and 100% felt. You're going to be cool with it. Uh, so that's going to be kind of really cool. Uh, Dominic's going to check out Zart. Yeah. You know, they've got some really interesting stuff. I love walking, walking around there. Guys, that's it for me tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate that you've all come back. And you know what? It's been a really fun night. I, again, I hope you, that's something of interest to you. I think it is. I think, you know, from looking at it, I think people were interested in the, in the conversation. This Monday, you go come and check out the Darkly Labs method. I'm going to walk us all the way through it on YouTube. Guys, until I see you in two weeks' time, not in that one week, but two weeks' time, Go out and make something awesome. Share it with us. Hopefully, you'll see it here too. And I will catch you all in two weeks' time. Until then, go make something amazing. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome.